Hey folks, this is Rory over at The Daily Coin, and this is part two of my interview with Dave Kranzler. They have these markets on complete lockdown, and without any further ado, here we go. I think I think right now, um, you know, the seeds have been sown for World War III. I don't think that the, that the Russian people are going to not back Putin. I think that they, I think that the Russian people like him enough that if he comes out and says we're being financially attacked by the United States that they're not going to that they're going to believe that because there's too much blood on our on the on the United States government's hands for the people the world over to to look at and 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 not at least question it they may not accept it but they will but it if you if that seed is planted then that's gonna. There's going to be people that are going to be asking questions, and I think that a lot of people would be, just like right now. If and we're not, I mean, and, and and no offense to your intelligence, Dave, but but if if you can figure that out, and I have an, an idea of it, people that are a whole lot smarter than us have already figured it out, right? Well, I, agree. I agree, and I think I think um, I think that. Um, that's the tragic flaw in in the human condition is that you get these guys who who get into power and control everything like we have in this country and their ego outweighs their their sensibility and i think I, that's why i think you're going to eventually have uh, a a clash between the russia china bloc and the united states yes the united states isn't going to accept anything short of complete world domination or the Western bloc, whatever, whoever you want to say is, is behind what the United States is doing. I mean, there's a, there's a great argument that it's really the BIS and the, and the, and the ultra, ultra elite calm, you know, international bank, Western international bankers, right? Yeah. Rothschild, Rockefeller, right. Kissinger, you know, the a lot scum. of guys. You don't even you don't even hear who they are. But if you go and you look at the 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 the, the committee that runs the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberg Group, you know, th- those are your guys, all right? So, so, so anyway, whatever. Just use the United States as being the front man for it. Yes. Um, I don't think that that block of people. They're so ego oriented. I mean, these guys think they're God. They've, they, yeah. they, you know, they've been, been so wealthy for so long and they've had their way for so long. And look what they're getting away with in this country. I mean, just the Patriot Act alone. <laughs> just the Patriot Act alone. Yeah. I mean, it's... think about this. This is what I was thinking about yesterday because I, you know, as an English major, I, you know, I was always interested in, in the notion of, of the absurd, you know, you know, it's kind of, tied into existentialism and and just the absurdity of human behavior. And think about this. How absurd is it that the Federal Reserve, and everyone's been stressing out and agonizing. There were probably guys on on Tuesday night that lost, were losing sleep over whether or not the Fed was going to change it from considerable time to patient. (laughs) Right? Yes. You know, and, and you get these guys and they sit there and they like, they sit there and they debate and, and argue over, you know, well, I don't know. If they leave it as considerable time, you, you know, I think the markets drop, but if they change it to patient, we should have a big rap. I mean, but think about how absurd that is. Yes. Someone tell me the difference between the definition of considerable time and the definition of patient. They're identical. There's no difference. You could maybe, if you really wanted to get anal, and I don't, I don't watch CNBC anymore. Maybe Steve Leisman sat there and was pulling. I could see him with like Oxford English Dictionary, Merriam-Webster English Dictionary. Oh, here's an old English di- dictionary. Let's see what the difference in meaning is between considerable time and patient. Okay, well, he's got beads of sweat going down his bald head. <laughs> I, I think patient might mean that they might raise interest rates a little more a little sooner than what considerable time might mean you know i mean it's absurd i mean it's these absurd. guys who are pulling the strings at the top they got to be laughing their ass off because oh, i would yeah. be i'd be in my room watching this and i'd be laughing i'd be you know hoisting champagne glasses oh we pulled <laughs> another one over the idiots yeah they're laughing all the way to their gold vault 
<laughs> right. Think how, but think how absurd that is. The whole thing focused on considerable time or patient. And you got this old woman who looks like someone's grandma, who looks like she just got off the couch from doing needlepoint and watching a soap opera. And, and she gets up there and she tries to explain all this. It's like, are you kidding me? I mean, you can't make this up. It's a clown show. It's a clown show. This should be a Broadway comedy. <laughs> it is. It is a Broadway and, comedy. It's just brought to us, you know, weekly or monthly or daily, depending on how much you tune in. It's just that's right. It, it's and, and and that change in the change in those words got us from from the time it was announced, you know, two fifteen New York time or whatever time it was, to um, you, you know, uh, ten thirty. New York time today. So basically less than three hours of stock market trading. It got us 70 points on the S and P of upside. <laughs> because of one word. Because of changing, of replacing considerable time with patience, three and a half percent. That was good for a three and a half percent value increase in the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, how, how can you take any of this seriously? I mean, really what they've done is, is they've, they've just trivialized everything, everything anyone does in this country to try and, and make their life better and improve their lot in life. And I'm, I was talking about this earlier with a colleague of mine. You know, unfortunately, the guys that, that, that do what we do and, and are involved in the precious metals sector, we see what's going on and we get it. You know, and, and we've been feeling pain now for the better part of three years because of the market intervention, the market manipulation and the crime and, and corruption and fraud, et cetera. And the thing of it is, there's there's like a whole body of people out there who have, have been able to keep their jobs. They got a nice salary, live in a nice home, yep. you know, and they think everything's fine. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, whatever the Fed did, it must have been good because my my stock portfolio went up. Yep. You know, and, and the thing of it is, they don't realize this, but they, the same two by four that's already, you know, the, the two by four that we can see being swung at our head, they have no idea it's coming. And right. most of them are going to get hit hit by that two, two by four and not even, and they won't even know it's there until the last second. Well, they didn't, they didn't see it coming in 2006, 2007, 2008. They didn't, they had no clue. 2000, about 2000. Okay. 2000. Hey, thank you. So. <laughs> About 1987, I, I remember I was I was I was working on Wall Street back then. I remember portfolio insurance. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, portfolio insurance. Fisher Black, the Black Shoals guru, had developed this stuff called portfolio insurance, and you know uh, a money manager can put it in his portfolio, and he's got no downside risk. <laughs> well, that yeah, maybe if the S and P falls, you know, one or two percent, it works. But one, you know, and I forget the exact day, October 1987, you know, we had like a 21% drop in the S&P. And, you know, people thought it was going to be the end of Wall Street back then. And that's when the uh, that's when Greenspan protection. just tweaked up the money supply. And I, I don't know how long it took, maybe six months later, onward and upward. Well, and that's when the plunge protection team was put into place also. That was that was eighty nine. I mean, the the exchange stabilization fund has actually been authorized. I think since nineteen thirty six, it was put in place as a currency stabilization mechanism because we were already moving away from the gold standard back then, and it included you know it it, it included gold as a currency, so it was okay for them to manipulate gold because if it helped them stabilize current cross exchange currency rates. You know, that, that, that's what the original exchange stabilization fund was for. It was always there. Okay. It was always supposed to be self-funding. And then, and then the, the 87 and 89 crashes, um, that, that's when the working group on financial markets was formed. And, that's, and that was to not only stabilize currencies, but to make sure that, you know, a market, a stock market decline wasn't disorderly. Like it's right. okay to let it. It's okay to let the stock market go straight up to Pluto, yeah. <laughs> but you can't let it go straight down to correct itself. And, and then, and then, actually, what happened was is, is you know Robert Rubin moved into 
the government. And that's really when during the Clinton administration is really when the working group on financial markets and the exchange stabilization fund was pretty much used to, to, to manipulate everything. 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 And that's, and now it's, now it's like, I mean, they have this market on complete lockdown. (laughs) And that's global markets, right? I mean, because wasn't the, wasn't LIBOR born from that or was, or was it the other way around? No, LIBOR's, LIBOR's been around, but, um, but I mean, uh, as far as what's going on with the manipulation of libel. Well, yeah, they, they, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they can manipulate, the, well, maybe, you know, maybe they can manipulate everything globally because like I said, the, the, the U S is behind, it might not be behind the full drop in the ruble, but they're definitely behind the, the recent plunge. Well, I mean, but can, you, you said earlier, you know, that the SWIFT system was the nerve center and it's the, the heartbeat of, of everything. And so wouldn't they be able to, to go through backdoor SWIFT and create whatever whatever world they want to create? I mean, seriously. Well, because I, 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 it's just that the dollar, that, that's, that's, that's the, the, the system that's used to settle, you know, uh, international trade with dollars. Yes. Everything moves through the SWIFT system. So the U.S. can, con- like when... When India wasn't going to join in on the sanctions on Iran because India wanted Iran's oil. Right. Right. And the U.S. shuts down the SWIFT system yes. because that's a way for them to force India to try and play ball. And then India says, screw that. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just send gold to Iran right. <laughs> and Iran will sell us oil. And that's what they did. Yes. And I think, I think it was this, I think it was actually when the U.S. exercised its control over the petrodollar by using the SWIFT system as as a as a weapon like that. I think that's when Russia really started looking into. I mean, it's not like they just started developing an alternative to the SWIFT system in the last year. No, I, I, I yeah, know. Yeah. So, uh, and I think I think Russia and I'm sure China's behind it. Well, um, the, you know, and, and maybe China is, is is sort of. I mean, Russia is sort of China's front in this. I think Russia is just like, you know what? We're not going to give the U.S. this power. We got to take this power away or they're going to take over everything. Right. And that's right. where I think we are now. I think I think you got this BRIC consortium, primarily Russia and China, flexing their muscle against the U.S. and the and 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 well, call it the Western interests. Move to try and take control of everything. And I want to ask you about the BRICS because. Uh, um, SGT report, Sean and I interviewed Rick Rule. And he, during that interview, he seemed to think that the BRICS, um, the BRICS alliance and the, and more importantly, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, he made a comment that they may not be around, that they may not make it because, and, and I'd ask him a question regarding the importance of palladium what you know because he he knows palladium but what do you think about that i mean as far as these coalitions you know just kind of falling apart personally i don't see that happening i don't see that the BRICS. i only see the BRICS um organization getting stronger and stronger all the time and, and hear me out for just a second you have rosef who is the president of Brazil when the NSA blew up a couple of years ago, Brazil said, we'll start our own internet. We'll run the line through South Africa, through India, through China, and it'll end in Russia. It'll end in Moscow and it will be devoid of any Google. It'll be devoid of anything Western and it won't be allowed in. And now we have the BRICS development bank. That's China. That's their baby. We have the SWIFT system. That's Russia's baby. So now we have three huge, 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 huge components that are controlled, that are being developed, that are being funded by three different countries that all work in tandem. I don't see the BRICS going anywhere. And now you have the the gold that is in South Africa. You have the platinum and palladium that is in South Africa. 
they're the second largest or the first largest uh, producers of gold. They're the largest producers of platinum, platinum and palladium. These are massive. Uh, they play a big role in global manufacturing and in air pollution, palladium, as far as controlling automobiles pollution. So I ask you, developing three massive global scenarios that are designed specifically to work in tandem with each other and that are designed to be outside of the American Western banking criminal corrupt organization. He, <laughs> he doesn't have a there. reason. You just gave him a great explanation. Well, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which you and I have discussed before, along with Alistair McLeod, I've talked to him about it as well. And the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, when they are fully developed, and they're not done yet, they're, they're far from being done with their development. When they, are, when they have everything locked up, they will, they will, they will represent north of 50% of the global population. Dude, it represents something like, you know, three quarters of the world's population. There you go. I, I, I've been aware of the SCO for, I don't know, I, I used to subscribe to the privateer and Bill Buckler first mentioned it, I don't know, at least four or five years ago. I wish he was still around because he always had great information and he was way ahead of everyone. Um, so, and, and back then, Iran wasn't even... They were just, they had just been invited to be an observing member. They weren't like, an, uh, you know, a formal member of it. Now they're a formal member. Right. So, I mean, I mean, look at the, just look at the natural resource base in that yes. consortium. Yes. I mean, I think, I think Iran is, I don't know, third or fourth largest oil producing country in the world. Yeah, I think it I is. Think, I think Russia may be the largest. Okay. I always thought it was Saudi Arabia, and then I saw something, you know, a while ago that, that alluded to the fact that Russia is the world's largest producer. Maybe they're the world's largest exporter of oil. I don't know. But I mean, you've got an enormous resource base there. Yes. <coughs> that includes the real, the actual resources that make our current globe operate. The, right. the way that The way that our global world is set up right now, they have control of the resources that make that function they have the copper they have the iron ore for the steel they have the gold that creates the money they have the oil that creates most of our power china is manufacturing solar panels at breakneck speed and it has plans to um, incorporate solar into that that being a huge part of their go forward the energy policy. We have a, a company in the portfolio, the stock portfolio of the, the fund that I, that I manage. And th this company is actually headquartered here in Denver. And I know them really well. And I, you know, we've owned it for a long time, but um, they, speaking of, of copper, they actually have a 51% ownership interest in kind of a backdoor way in a massive copper deposit that sits in Southeast Russia, not too far from China. I mean, this thing is massive. Um, they think this is something that, you know, if it's as big as they think it is, it's, it's bigger than any of these copper gold porphyries that you see in, in South America. It's huge. And they were over in China recently um, meeting with four different Chinese mining concerns, a couple of them are the largest. And then I think they're in negotiations right now to sell off their interest in this deposit in Russia, but it's, it's right near China. So it's like, you know, and the, and the, the, um, the transportation systems from where this mine sits into China are, are tremendous. I mean, it's giant. And then they also have another they're, they're, they don't have a controlling interest, but they're, they've got a joint venture interest in another gigantic copper deposit that's, that's in, I think it's in Serbia or something, but it's in, in, a, in the part of the world where it's in the BRIC fold, in the SCO fold, not yes. the US fold. I mean, 
Russia, people don't really realize, I think, and I, the only reason I'm aware of this is because of the mining companies that were invested in that have been poking holes in the ground in Russia. Russia has just unbelievable, an unbelievable resource base. Yes. And I'm sure that's why China's now, you know, they're going to get oil from Russia now. Right. And they're going to do oil and, and do it in their, I mean, what's, what, what's lost on everyone why are these countries, especially China, why are they accumulating as much gold as they're accumulating? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. No one, no one's even, no one's even, even, um, you know, talking about that. You know, what's, what's the plan? Are you still there? I'm here. Right. So why would they be doing that? Do you think we're going to wake up one day and find out that China and the United States are, are in bed with each other? I don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I think that um, I can't remember who it was, um, but I was speaking with someone. I was Rob Kirby when I was talking to him, and he was saying, you know, that China's just sitting there watching everything unfold in front of them. You know, watching the United States fall on their fall on its own knife. You know, and they're not, that's why they're being quiet. You know, why? Well, that's involved? what I think's going on here. I think you know. Uh, I, I think I think that what we're seeing here is the last gasps of desperation by um, a body of of people who control the West who are desperate to to keep control of of, of the power they've had since the dollar. Well, really, since Bretton Woods, but even more so since since the dollar was completely disconnected from the gold standard. I would say further back than Bretton Woods. I would say since the inception of the Federal Reserve. I think that the Federal Reserve, the inception of that monster, is what gave these guys the ultimate weapon. Well, that, that's that, right. That got the ball rolling. Right. And then over time, they finally were able. But really, really since, ever since World War II and then since, since the U.S. kind of squashed the Russia and got rid of the Cold War, um really the US has been in control of everything. Yeah, they you know, or at least been the front man for whatever entity is called the BIS, the people who run the BIS. I don't know, but it's it's Western. It's a Western yes. control faction. And they've been in control of everything. And that's I mean, all the wealth has been kind of sucked, has been kind of sucked the rest of the world, and a lot of it's been sucked into the United States. But it's, it's been it's been fictional wealth. I mean, you know, Fiction. how wealthy would the United States be or, or, or how how much of what we see around us would have been possible if the U.S. hadn't been able to issue all the debt that it's issued. Right. And over the last 30 years. And, and I really like what and I because I'd never thought of the SWIFT system in the way that you described it a minute ago. I really like that because that is a huge, huge part of how they've been able to do it, because. If you've got the on-off switch, if you've got, if you control the pipeline to the financial world, literally, then you can, you can do whatever you want to. And that's, and that's why I think that, I really think that, that they were used, that they, that they, and this may be, this is just pure speculation on my part, but I believe that there's probably a piece of software that runs in conjunction with the SWIFT that says, manipulate the LIBOR manipulate this market, manipulate that market, you know, the global markets, the FX market. I mean, all of these massive global markets that we know are rigged. We, they, not only do we know that they're rigged, they've been brought to court. They've been fined. Nobody's been to jail, but they've at least been fined. And it's on record that you, dirtbag, are guilty. Well, we can't use the word guilty, but... <laughs> And I think that that's what's, and I think that that's part, uh, a big part of what the SWIFT system is. Why would, and, and if not, why would Russia pour as much as they have into developing the alternative to that system? And it's supposed to come online in May. It's supposed to be launched and, and up and mm -hmm. running in May. And they have, they have put every ounce of everything that they have into getting that system up and running. And in, and in spite of 
what's happening right now. And, and I think that your analysis is, is spot on as far as Russia and the ruble and what's happening right now in regards to the SWIFT system. I think that, the, I think that, that, that they have spearheaded that, that the alternative to the SWIFT system, specifically because of that, because they know that they're using the SWIFT system as a global weapon in much larger ways, like I said, rigging the LIBOR, uh, rigging FX, rigging everything, that they're able to lo- rig all of these global markets through that system. Because if you think about it, that system is plugged in to every major bank in the world. And where does the money come from? It flows through every major bank in the world. So it would only make sense that if you've got a piece of software that's sitting over here on the side doing its thing, and in conjunction with the SWIFT system, they can do whatever the hell they want to. I mean, or am I I just completely out in the woods here? No, the SWIFT system is the central nervous and circulation circulatory system of the dollar's reserve status. Russia's threatening that right now. Big time. Well, they're going to right. hit it. And again, I just sort of circle back. There's no coincidence. The biggest and most vicious attack on the ruble came shortly after Putin announced he was test he was getting he was going to start testing the Swift alternative, the Swift system alternative. And that's it. I mean, you know, it's it's really e- it, it, it's easy to kind of figure out what's going on if you if you're willing to think like a criminal (laughs) right and that's how i mean i figured this out 10 years ago you know and it was easy with it was easy with with bush in office because you knew all these guys were criminals right and i would just sit there and I, i would run through the mental exercise of okay well and this is after 911, right? And after it didn't take me too long after 911 to figure out what the real deal was. Or at least we, you know, we don't know exactly what the real deal was, but pretty much, you know, that it wasn't the way the government said it was, right? right? And so after that I was like, you know what? This is easy. If I were in their shoes and I was a criminal, what would I do next? <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, Patriot Act, Homeland Security Act, yes. detainee bill, you know? Let's take away these guys' rights, and they won't, let's do it in a way that they won't even know it, because they're going to think that we're 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 putting in all this legislation to protect their safety and protect them from terrorists. Yeah, you know, Tara, I'm going to protect them from Tara. Remember that's how <laughs> W talks. He had a pipeline to God, apparently. We're yes. going to protect them from Tara, and this is what God told me to do. You know, <laughs> we're going to protect you. Well, guess what? We didn't protect you. We just stripped you of all your constitutional rights, and you don't even realize it. <laughs> don't even realize it. I mean, you, you welcomed know, it. most of this country, they've had the wool pulled over their eyes, and they don't even realize it. <laughs> it's, and it's, 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 it's been ingenious. Um, it's been ingenious if you're not willing to think like a criminal. You think like a criminal, and it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on. You know, and, and that was the genius of Obama. You know, people were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. First black president, politically incorrect if I voice my disagreement with a black man. You know, yes. I'm a racist if I do that. Yes. I've heard people say that. You yes. disagree with Obama, you're a racist. Really? No, well, no. what if I disagree with Bush? Does that mean I hate white people? That makes you a racist, too. <laughs> yeah, reverse racist. <laughs> you know, but it was like people have been willing to give Obama. Everything. Way more leeway yes. than they were willing to give Bush. Well, but and yet why is that? Because one in six Americans have food on their table because of Obama. You know, yeah, that's true. Well, so, not. I mean, that program was already in place. He just it was already he just, in place, but he's grown it. He's grown he, it yeah, exponentially. That Social Security disability. Yes. Um, I've been I've been complaining to people about the SSDI program for a long time. A long and, time. And, you know, especially with lawyers, you can't because lawyers make a lot of money off of it. They make a lot of money getting people signed up on it. And there was an article that came out, I forget where it was, a, you know, a reputable publication came out and just eviscerated the SSDI system and talked about how, you know, these lawyers 
you know, make it seem like they're doing a, a benefit for people, but they're doing it because they're making a ton of money. And not only that, not only that, taxpayer money pays for the legal fees involved when if you sign up with a lawyer and he gets you SSDI, the taxpayers pay for his legal fees. Oh, that's nice. I always thought it came out of the SSDI payment that the client got, but it doesn't. The taxpayer pays for it. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Wow. Rory, they got us coming and going. Yes, and, they do. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, and I was, I've been, I, I kind of thought this about a year ago, but now I'm convinced. I think, I think that this is just going to keep getting worse until the dollar collapses. Yes. And we may not see that happen because we may be in the middle of World War III. I think the U.S. would, would rather start a world war than be forced into a position where they had to open up the Fed vaults for everyone to look at. Because you know when they open those doors, there's nothing but dust in there, dust and mice. Right. Yes. That's it. That's all that's, that's all you're gonna think, find. Think about think about how think about what the implications would be if if because there's a lot of people who aren't willing to believe that the gold's not really there. If they can't see it, you know, if if, if 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 the Fed says it's there, well, it's got to be there. They wouldn't lie about that. I mean, they lie about <laughs> everything else. They wouldn't lie about that. Right. You know? And and but think about it. You know, think about it. If for once and for all, okay, come on, let's just open the vaults. Let's see what you got. They won't even open the vaults. Right. They wouldn't even open the vaults for Germany. Germany wanted to see the vaults. Right. They showed them one vault. You know, and I'm sure Germany didn't say, okay, well, can we check the serial numbers and and See the warehouse receipts and match that with whose bars these are. <laughs> uh, that's what Peter Boehringer is, is pushing on. That's the it's guy. It's not going to happen, though. No, Peter Boehringer is nothing. He's he doesn't. He's nothing. He's not part of the elitists. Yeah, he's not in the club. That's for sure. He's not in the club. He is not in the club. So it'll probably go the same way as the Swiss gold, Swiss gold vote, was the gold initiative. Right. Exactly. Never, never be allowed well, to happen. Just, it would be even worse for the German government if they had to go to their people and say, you know, we, we, we trusted our gold with the U.S. and it's gone. We can't get it back. There, would, there probably would be a, an uprising over there. Oh, there would. I would think there would be. I mean, there, I, I would think that, that 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 would happen pretty quickly. Over here, no big deal. Oh, no, no, no go. No let problem. Let me go and see what's going on with, in the voice. <laughs> I was going to say the Kardashians. <laughs> Survivor. Oh, I got to get home and watch Survivor. Oh, we don't have any gold? That's okay. Here, I got to turn Survivor on. Right. It's all good. Survivor's still on, so shoot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Must be fine. It doesn't matter if we don't have any gold. I got to be able to get access to Survivor. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, let's end it right there, Dave. Otherwise, we'll we'll we'll... We'll go on for another another hour. <laughs> well, we've been talking with Dave Kranzler over at Investment Research Dynamics. And Dave, why don't you tell the folks about your website and your services? Well, I've got a the, the blog is a try to be a truth seeker blog. Sometimes it's a little bit of a rant blog. Um, and in conjunction with it, I, I like to think I offer some unique analysis and I try to back up all my assertions with links, source links. You know, there's going to be some opinion on there, of course, but it wouldn't be a blog. Um, and then in conjunction with that, I also offer some, I think, unique uh, stock research. And right now I'm focused on junior mining stocks and home builders because I think the home builders offer a great short opportunity. And my research reports go in depth behind the numbers and it's it's analysis and presentation that you won't find anywhere especially from wall wall street research reports so and i and i offer those for a, a very modest price in fact my latest research report is on a company that despite the latest spike higher in the home builders over the last day and a half if you had just shorted 100 shares of this stock when the report came out you'd have made like 10 times your the cost of the research report so wow. So that's that. And then I also manage a, a very, very small, well, at least smaller than it was three years ago, precious metals and mining stock hedge fund. Okay. Uh, 
And we actually have, even last year, we outperformed our benchmark index. I think this year, because of our concentration in the juniors, we're probably going to underperform. But, you know, at some point when this stuff turns around, our, our fund is going to be a grand slam home run. There you go. But, hey, thanks for having me. And, um, and we can find that at, at investmentresearchdynamics.com? Yes, investmentresearchdynamics.com. All right. And all in the links to your reports are right there on the on the site. Yes, front page. Okay. Well, all right. Well, Dave, it's been always a pleasure, always insightful, and I greatly appreciate all of your time this morning. It's been awesome. So, Thanks for having me. I always love talking with you, Rory. Yes, we do seem to have a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. You, Sean at SGT, and yes. Eric, news doctors. Eric Dubin, yeah. And, uh, well, and, and John at, at Silver Doctors. You guys are all great guys. We try. But uh, uh, we will talk with you soon. Thank you. All right.